Let's talk about the madness of dealing with instruction or rule files for coding agents. You see, today every coding agent ships with their own set of rules or rule formats. And essentially your code repo becomes a drawer of instruction files, which unfortunately does not translate from one coding agent to another coding agent. But I think we finally have a solution and that's what we're going to be talking in this video. Now, the current status quo is nicely captured by this tweet. This is madness. What are we doing? And if you look at different coding IDs, each one of them have their own way of defining these uh, rules or instruction files with different naming conventions. And also the placement is different. And I think the invention of MCPs uh, adds to this mess a lot more. So what is the solution? Well, uh, today there was an announcement from multiple different companies who agreed to use agents.md uh, for defining instructions and rules for coding agents, which I think is a great news for developers because now you don't have to remember what was the file format, where to store the file for different coding agents. And most of us are working with multiple different coding agents. So hopefully it's going to become standardized and it's going to be a lot easier. But you're going to notice some companies are missing from uh, this effort. We're going to talk about them later in the video. So what exactly is this? It's a simple open format for guiding coding agents used by over 20,000 open source projects. And I think the way they came up with this number was they simply did a search on agents.md on GitHub. And you can see a lot of different projects use agents.md. So it makes it a natural choice. And the good thing is that these coding agents are going to be following a standard format now. Now we have already seen some examples. So for example, a uh, model context protocol, uh, this was created by Anthropic and has become really an industry standard. Another example would be LLMs.txt, which is kind of a replacement of robots.txt uh, for LLMs. So for uh, web crawlers, you had robot.txt with every website. But now uh, there's a recommendation to include LLMs.txt uh, for LLMs when they're doing web crawling. Okay, so what exactly is this agents.md? So here they say that readmes were designed for humans. This gives you a quick start guide for the project, what exactly uh, is in the project and how you contribute. Now agents.md, they're specifically designed to provide context to your coding agents. This will include steps like how to build a project, what type of um, tests to run, if there are any specific coding formats you want the agents to follow, or um, if there are any specific security concerns that you want uh, the agents to look at. So this is a way to provide clear, predictable instructions to your agent. And that's why they have kept it separate from readmes uh, for humans. And the goal is to have agent focused guidelines that complements the existing readme and documents. Now they say, rather than introducing another proprietary file, we chose a name and format that uh, could work for anyone. If you're building or using coding agents and find this is helpful, feel free to adopt it. Now, if you look at the list of companies right now, it's OpenAI, AMP Code, Jules from Google, cursor factory row code there's a big one missing and that is anthropic cloud code is still following that cloud.md but hopefully they will also follow uh, the same standard uh, which will make life easy for developers but time will tell now how is this supposed to be structured uh, so here's an example file uh, you first provide details instruction on how to set up the environment. For example, uh, here is how do you install different packages. Uh, probably if you're running a Python uh, uh, project, you want to set up the virtual environment there, how to install all the requirements, then um, specific instructions on how to test uh, the project. So if you have worked with cursor, you probably want to put these things in um, uh, cursor rules. If you have worked with uh, cloud code, you want to put them in cloud.md file. But now there's going to be this standard format followed by at least a few of the um, 
coding agents, which is a good news and hopefully adopted broadly by the community. Okay, so then they go on to say uh, how to use agents.md. So create an agents.md file at the root of the uh, repo. Most coding agent can help you uh, if you ask them nicely. Now, since AGI is coming, make sure you ask them very nicely. Okay, create what matters, right? So you don't want to just stuff things in there. You want to keep it very clean and just provide the context that is going to be actually useful and helpful for the coding agent uh, in setting up the project or making changes to your code. The things that we want to include is a project overview, build and test commands, code style guidelines, testing instructions, security, security considerations if you have any. Especially if you're doing wipe coding, you definitely want to think about security when you're building uh, applications with agentic systems. Okay, and then you can add uh, extra instructions. So commit messages or pull request guidelines, security gachas, large database data sets, deployment steps, anything uh, you would tell a new teammate belongs here. And uh, if you have large mono repos, so if you have very large code bases, then you want to use nested agents.md files for sub projects. So place another agents.md inside each package. Agents automatically read the nearest file in the directory. So the closest one takes precedence and every sub project can ship tailored instructions. All right. So if you have worked with cloud code, uh, they follow kind of a very similar structure. You can have uh, a cloud.md file in your root directory uh, within a folder. You can have their own and within the subfolders, you can create their own specific set of instructions. Um, so it's good to see that they are following exactly the same format. So you could potentially replace cloud.md with agents.md and vice versa. And um, here is an example of a messy, huge project. So they say that at the time of the writing, the main OpenAI repo has 88 agents.md files, which is kind of crazy. So if, if an agent is working on this project, uh, depending on which sub component it's working on, it has to pick that specific uh, agents.md file. I, I sometimes feel bad for these coding agents, to be honest. Okay, then they have um, uh, a section for frequently asked questions. So are there required fields? Agents.md is just standard markdown. Use any headings you like. The agent simply pass the text you provide, right? You don't have to worry about the formatting uh, whatsoever. It's just what are the set of instructions that are present in the agents.md file. And what if there are uh, conflicting is instructions in these files, so they say that the closest agents.md uh, to the edited file wins. Explicit user chat uh, prompts overwrite anything, okay? So even if you have instructions which are conflicting in different files, depending on the proximity of the current file that is being edited, uh, it will pick one of the most closest instructions that it can find. And then uh, will the agent run testing commands found in agents.md automatically. Uh, so here they say, yes, if you list them, the agent will attempt to execute relevant programmatic checks and uh, fix failures before finishing the task. Now, this is very important, especially uh, if you are working with large code bases, you want to do test-driven development. And in my uh, personal experience, this is probably the best use case for coding agents. You want them to write code uh, test cases for you and execute those. These are supposed to be living documents. So as you progress throughout your project, you want to keep updating them based on the state of your project. And then uh, how do I migrate existing uh, docs to agents.md? They recommend just renaming existing files to agents.md and then uh, put them in appropriate places. So if you have cloud.md with cloud code and you want to use it with cursor, you could just rename it to agents.md and um, cursor is going to pick it up from there. I'll probably create a follow-up video on how to use agents.md with your coding agents. If you have been um, using any other instruction files, you just can replace them with this. 
and update your coding agent and they're going to pick it up hopefully but do let me know if you are interested okay so let's have a quick look at the companies or projects that are involved and also i'm trying this new format for videos so do let me know if you like this uh so we have um open ai codex to be honest i haven't tried it in a while uh probably it's worth checking out again with the new gpt5 i have been mainly using cloud code for the last few weeks the second one is uh, amp code uh, i have heard a lot about them uh, on x and to be honest the website looks really good uh, i think it's probably worth exploring it's not an open source project, but their pricing is definitely better uh, compared to something like Cursor. And it's a lot more transparent. The next one is uh, Factory AI. This is a new one. I don't know much about them. Uh, anyone, I think I haven't heard much uh, at all. You already know about Jules from Google. Interestingly enough, um, Gemini CLI is not on the list, at least not mentioned on the main website. Gemini CLI uh, uses Gemini.md. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if uh, the Gemini CLI team decides to use agents.md instead. And then we have Rowcode, uh, which is an open source project. Uh, so I think there is a lot of potential for open source projects uh, like client to adopt the same format. Now, these are very early days. Um, so one good example of a standard that has been adopted is MCP, uh, but there are some other examples uh, of standard being proposed by different companies which haven't done well, I would say. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. But do let me know your thoughts, what you think about it uh, and how you would use it in your own coding agents. So anyways, this is going to be it for this video. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.